What is up, Cracks and Clan members, Poker fans, and all those who will stomp on this video? I'm Sarah Cracks, and here with episode 26 review of Pokemon X, Y, and Z. So, I don't know, this one, I don't know how I feel about this episode. Like, one, it shows the inconsistency of the Granger form, which is one of my biggest issues with the thing. But it also showcases that competitive battling is kind of really digging into the anime. Because Shota pretty much acted like a competitive battler. Although there was one thing in the anime that kind of upset me. Because, like, I don't know, they've been doing these inconsistencies with the moves recently that like, just kind of bug me. Um, but anyway, so let's talk about it. Uh, so... The episode starts off with another Grinch battle with a freaking Scizor, which Scizor would have blow blown away, but no, whatever. And then Shota shows up, starts talking to Ash, like, hey, I got my eight gym badges, and I'm like, wow, that's awesome. And then he shows them off. He has two badges in there that are not canon to Kalos. So they pretty much pulled another one of those things where the, you know, the rival has badges from different gyms that never actually existed in the games. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I actually like it when they do that type of stuff because it's like it just shows off that you know this is a much bigger world. So there's more than just eight gems. You just have the ability to choose which gems is what. I just wish that the anime actually tend to do where Ash would actually go to one of these off gems that don't exist in the main games to like kind of show off something different with a new badge or something just to differentiate a little bit from the games. I don't know. That's just me though. So. He starts talking to him, and then starts talking about the Greninja form, and how he almost beat Diantha, and that's where I was like, yeah, that's bullshit. And then, like, this battle starts going, or they're like, hey, why don't we battle again? And then Shota's like, yeah, sure, let's do it a three-on-three -three just to see how good I am. And I'm like, okay, so we're going to get some action. Uh, the battle started off with Noivern versus the Blade. Now, the Blade, obviously, badass. I'm so glad that he has it. Noivern, this is one... <laughs> I, this is honestly just a, a pet peeve I have with the anime where they just randomly give Pokemon moves that they didn't have before and they just come out of fucking nowhere. Like, if the Pokemon's away, I get it. You know, it's not with the main group. But if you're going to give a new po a Pokemon a brand new move, please let us see it happen. Because, like, it's just... it's it's In every saga, there's al they always do this shit. And I, it always pisses me off. I don't understand the purpose of having... Like, I guess, you know, that sometimes it's a surprise factor. It's like, hey... I have a brand new move right when I need it, but it wasn't like that in this case. He just threw out a freaking Dragon Claw out of nowhere. Like, first of all, why do you why are you giving a special attacker physical moves? For the love of God, give him Dragon Pulse, Draco Meter, Fire Blast, something else besides physical stab. Like, ugh. I don't know. That match was weird. Um, Norbert ended up winning because uh, apparently Dragon Claw hits the blade super duper hard and. He got blown away, and I was just like, the fuck? Uh, and then he brought in a Cloitzer. Now, Cloitzer is, is kind of like a mad Pokemon in the competitive scene. Uh, it's not that great. You know, it does hit somewhat hard because of its Mega Launcher ability. But realistically speaking, it's kind of slow, so it's really unreliable, and it doesn't have the greatest, greatest defenses, so most of the time you're going to get KO'd. I mean, you could probably do, the, like, a lot of damage to something, but most of the time you're going to do die before you do anything. But Sora came in with those competitive strats, and I was like, bruh. That is fucking powerful. So now everyone starts trying to do his shenanigans where he's just flying around doing acrobatics because and dragon claws and stuff like that because apparently it's a freaking physical attacker now. And like the one the one thing that bugged me about that matchup is the fact that they had him use heal pulse. Now the th here, here's my issue with it. In game, right? In game, heal pulse heals other Pokemon. Like basically, if you're in a double battle, it heals your partner and the opponents. It never heals the user. Heal Pulse is not a move that heals you. So that one was just straight up bullshit. He healed Cloetzer with a move that doesn't hit the Pokemon that uses it. What the fuck? So that's my only gripe with that. But other than that, like, he was using strats. Like, he came in, he dragged, like, that Neuvern was trying to come in, and he's like, bruh, I got this Dragon Pulse right here. Boom, boom, away. And I was like, whoa, this man just used a dra this man used Mega Launcher. This man, this man just blasted Noivern out of the fucking sky! And then, and then he did that to a Lucha too. Now here's my thing. Why the fuck does he still have a Lucha? Like, why? Can we, can we just talk about, what, how Lucha's just so ass. Like, it's literally, he is literally the embodiment. He's, he is the, what is it? He's the Unpheasant, the Torkoal, the Torterra, the Gen 2, uh, what the fuck? Noctowl. 
of Gen 2. And then, like, the Butterfree of Gen 2. Like, Halucha is literally the worst Pokemon on Ash's team right now. It's so bad. And he's so irrelevant that they don't even show the beginning of the battle. They do, like, they do this weird cut to where, like, Halucha gets sent out. And they do this cut to where the battle's already mid midway. And, like, Halucha, like, misses the high jump kick. And then, like, Cloetzer's doing some shit. And then, like, I was like, wait, what the f- When this is- I was lost! Like, how the f- Halucha, just go- Just, just go away. There, see, and the problem is he, he takes him to the fucking lead. This Pokemon that's so irrelevant. Why? But anyway, so they start battling. And Halucha tries to attack from above. And then, like, the strats. Like I said, the strats. He's like, Dragon Pulse, but on the ground. He's like, blasting himself upwards. And, like, he basically baited Ash. The dude baited Ash. Because, like, he's up there in the, uh, in the air. And then he's like, come get me. And then, like, Ash's like, Halucha, go above him. And then hit him with Flying Press. And he's like... Blasted him with an ice beam right on his fucking chest. I was like, bruh, Shota. This man, this man is powerful, okay? And Haluja got blasted away, and then that man got taken down. And then he sends out Greninja. Oh, well, Greninja's already out in the battle. And then Greninja's gonna fight. And then, like, he takes him down with, like, an aerial ace. No, a cut. It was cut. Like, he tried ice beam, and then, like, Greninja just basically used cut and, like, dashed through forward and, like, this is one of those things where they do like uh, the the po or the in animes where the character with a sword like cuts like dashes forward and then you don't even see the head but all of a sudden they just end behind them and then they put away the sword and the other po the character goes down. That's basically what they pulled off with the cut. And then it was Sub uh, Subtile versus Greninja, and like they actually made it seem like it could have been a pot potentially good battle because uh, like they had this thing where like Leaf Blade was clashing with Aerial Ace and I thought that was cool. Again. X and Y, like, Gen 6 has a lot of great visuals, but that's the best thing it has for, you know, going for it. But they started doing that, and then, like, all of a sudden, you have, like, Ash using Water Shuriken versus Bullet Seed, and then, like, freaking Greninja gets, or Greninja tries to attack, and then Sceptile, like, moves away and, like, avoids it and uses Leaf Storm, knocking Greninja out, and then, like, Ash is like, okay, we got this, and they start duking it out, except for the fact that they, there's an actual editing error, like an actual mistake that they did in the animation, where they had Greninja attack Sceptile, and then Sceptile dodged, and then like hit Greninja, and then they were standing opposite of each other, so like Sceptile was on Ash's side, and then Greninja was on Shota's side, but then as soon as the next shot comes in, they're switched, and I'm like, how the fuck, no, no I, how, huh? Uh, and then, you know, Ash tried to pull the Greninja 4 and bullshit, which I was like, okay, so here we're gonna go. Like, I know, I knew he was gonna lose his match, right? That's why I have the whole point of inconsistency. He almost beats Mega Gardevoir, but he loses to a Sceptile. Uh, but he doesn't even go Greninja form. Like, that was weird. Like, he lost because he tried going the Greninja form and failed. And because of that, Greninja stuttered. Even though there was no link, there's no reason for Greninja to have, like, just randomly, like, stopped in the middle of movement and then get hit with a Leaf Storm. So I was just like, huh? Like, that one was just weird and, like, random. Like, I didn't... How? What? Like, they're not... They're not synced. So why is Greninja stuttering because Ash is not doing anything? Like... He's still dashing around. Like, there's no reason for Greninja to just randomly stop in the middle of it. I don't know. Whatever. The point is, Greninja gets blown away by a Leaf Storm. Sceptile takes it. Shota wins. He's celebrating. He's awesome. And then they, I, one thing that bugged me is that they kept talking about the whole, like, oh, you've gotten stronger and stronger. That dude didn't get stronger. That dude got smarter. This man was playing with brains, which is honestly the best way you fight a character like Ash. You just gotta be smart. If you... It's either that, like, you either outpower him or you outsmart him, which is not that hard because Ash doesn't really have the best of strats. He's usually just a go and get it kind of character. So, realistically speaking, Shota, because of the way he was analyzing everything, he had the ability to win this match, just hands down. And if it wasn't for the Grinder form, I'm pretty sure that Shota would have beat him last time. That's, that's just my whole thing. Uh, inconsistency with the Grinder form is going to continue on. I really, there was a big issue at the end of the episode where they're like, hey, let's go to the, you know, let's go get the 8th gym badge. And then Shota's like, hey, can I go with you guys? And I was like, yeah, cool. 
And like I was expecting them to do a, like what they usually do where they do like at least an episode of like chilling out and trying to get to the place or something or another. Or at least have the next episode start where they're getting to the place. But no, in this episode, they go from an, a town area with like a bunch of people and then up high in the mountains with like snow gear out of nowhere. Like just completely out of left field. Unexplained. Uh, the other thing I should mention is the fact that we did see Team Flare stuff today. No Team Rocket, thank God. Uh, we did see some Team Flare action where Team Flare is, like, testing out in the forest. Uh, Officer Jenny with Manectric and, like, some farmers went there to, expl uh, you know, find out there was a noise there in the area. Uh, and then, like, these hot, giant vines just started coming out of nowhere. I was just like, what the fuck are those? The whole time. Because I didn't, I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, I saw that we were, like, like, roots and like branches and like vines and shit but like the first time i saw it i was like what the fuck uh and yeah that's pretty much it that's all, that's all we got um but yeah that's gonna be it for the review link will be in the description to go watch the episode and as always my name is Arthur croxton and i'll see you guys in future videos